Hey guys, welcome to Breaking Burke. This is my YouTube channel about houseplants and gardening here in the desert of Albuquerque, New Mexico. One of my favorite plants is uh, the topic of discussion today. I love the tropical vibe and hibiscus definitely provides that. This here that I have in front of me is a rose mallow or uh, often referred to as hardy hibiscus. Party hibiscus is kind of hard to call these because there's two types that I know of that I have. Uh, there's this one that is herbaceous, meaning it grows from the roots every year. If we go down here to the bottom, you can see I do prune it to about two to three inches from the ground. Uh, what that does is it gives me a little bit of an identifier as to where my plants are. These are later starting plants, so uh, usually the end of May, uh, maybe the middle of June is when they'll start to break through. For some reason, they started to grow for me super early and they've been blooming for a week or two, or this specific plant at least has. Uh, now, like I said, there is another variety and I do have a bloom of one of those to show you the size difference. This is a Rose of Sharon, a little bit different uh, in the structure. You can see it very uh, much smaller all around. Let's put it next to that one so we can see the size comparison. Uh, about half the size normally. Now these do come in different forms. The rose mallow can either come in a rounded shape like this. There's a Texas star which is a five-leafed uh, pointed looking star bloom that comes in white or red. Uh, the leaves do change on them as well. They're not all the same. Uh, this one you can see is pointed. This one back here, uh, again, a little pointed, but more of a red tint to it. And they do come in dwarf, standard, and uh, traditional. The traditional can grow anywhere from 6 to 12 feet, depending on where you put it, how much you water, and if you fertilize. Uh, they usually don't require staking, if anything, the first year they might because they do come out a little spindly. I have an example here of a garden that is 10 feet away from the other one and the plants aren't acting the same at all. This one you can see is a little bit of a leggy version. Uh, I did get it as a coal from a grower who grows tons of the best varieties of these and this one just didn't make their cut and they didn't want to put their name on it and they didn't want to give it a name so they threw it in a box with 10 other and sold it at a discount now I did buy those and I have a few of them in my yard so you will see them here or there like I said they're the ugly sister I guess you could say because they aren't as full or big or pretty you can see here this is more or less what you will end up with your first year just one or two little stalks uh, nothing too impressive it will throw out the same size of big blooms but uh, the second year is really when they do flourish they come back with two or three times the amount of canes and don't require any support because they do lean on each other uh, that is another good reason why I leave those little support or canes at the bottom when I prune that actually does help support it too uh, Let's see, the Rose of Sharon, it, which is the other hardy hibiscus with the smaller flower, that one only comes in a few different colors. I think it's white, pink, purple, maybe a blue tint, but the blue and the purple honestly are kind of the same. Uh, these Rose Mallows, the herbaceous type, they've been playing with them a lot more and you can see here is uh, another one of my Mars Madness, I think is what it's called. This one does get more sun than the other one because the plants in front don't filter it as much. So it is darker in foliage and the one, uh, the hardy hibiscus, especially the rose mallows, that can have colored foliage. The more sun, the darker the foliage. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see here. Now deadheading. You do want to stay on top of that because they do uh, perform better, they'll bloom more. You just, nothing special, just cut off the bud, the spent bud, 
You don't want to be doing this to something that's still good. And you can see these sh scissors need to be sharpened. But there is an easier way of doing that, especially on the hardy hibiscus, uh, the rose mallow version. You can see here there's a bit of knuckle in the stem there where it gets wider. If you just grab it with two fingers, put them behind it, and put your thumb on the knuckle, let's see, and push, you hear a snap, and it breaks off clean and easy. Now, if you pull the flower out and look in there, that is where your seeds would come. That has to get full, like I'm talking, it will be filling up this whole thing like my thumb, like huge in there. And then it's ready to be picked for seeds, or they'll even pop open on their own. Sometimes they look similar to that with just a sheath on the outside. Uh, they do start easy from seed and they can self-seed, so... That is another reason why you want to make sure you stay on top of it because, I mean, if you have your beds planted already, you could have something growing in the bottom that's not going to do good. You could always pick it up and move it. Uh, oh, the blooms only last a day. So don't get discouraged. Don't think you did something wrong. In cooler climates or even here in the desert when we don't have 90s or 100 plus days, they do close up in the evening and they'll open again the next day. You can usually tell if that happens because there's a little bit of damage to the flower. It'll have some scorching around the ends. Like, see this one has a little bit of tatteredness there. Uh, not a very fragrant flower. Some people say they get scent off of them. It's hit and miss with me. I smell more uh, scent coming from the Rosa Sharon, the smaller variety. And, oh! I don't know if I finished talking about this, but since they uh, do crossbreed them or have been crossbreeding these with uh, tropicals, they do come in a bigger array of colors. I have a yellow that was supposed to be new this year, but I got last year somehow. I have uh, a couple blues. I have purple. I have white. I have red. Uh, white and a red Texas star. I have... Uh, of course, they come in pink and white swirls and every variation of that you could imagine. Uh, I don't know exactly how many I have. I'd have to count and then I don't want to do that. But I don't know the names of all of them. I do know the names of a few. Like I said, some of these I got as a mixed variety bag. Another thing you do want to keep in mind with these is they are heavy feeders since they do bloom so prolifically and they grow, grow quite a bit. Uh, I fertilize every four to six weeks if I remember and what else was there that I wanted to say? There was something else. Oh water needs. These were originally called marshmallow because they grew alongside of swamps and lakes and rivers here in the US so it is a native plant to the United States uh, tons of different names they have for them marshmallow hardy hibiscus uh, and now that I'm trying to tell you I can't think of them but they can get confusing because everyone seems to have a different name for them I think that's about it. I've tried to record this a couple times, got a little frustrated, and yeah, so this is the best go of it. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight as to how to care for these, the best way to do it. Um, one thing that I did forget is in the winter, if you are in a colder zone, I'm not, I don't get that cold, but we do get snow occasionally. I like to, after I prune it down to the two to three inches, throw another inch of some fresh compost on there and that'll definitely help uh, with insulation and make sure it comes back. They are usually hardy down to a zone four or five, uh, these big rose mallow versions. So it's not really necessary, but it helps me sleep at night. So that's why I do it. Um, 
If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below in the comment area. I will get back to you. Thank you for watching.